Hi friends, my name is Kayla Rain, and today I'm doing my monthly recommendations and the theme for January is fantasy. So Trina and I decided to go a little bit old school and just do kind of a throwback simple topic and I know that many of you have maybe put out favorite fantasy books before but maybe this is a time where you can kind of make a newer video and talk about some newer fantasy finds that you have read recently. For those of you who don't read a lot of fantasy that are in the group, that's what this group is about. So if there is a particular genre that you haven't read a lot of, now you have the opportunity to kind of get some different books and recommendations to put on your TBR and jump into this genre with a little bit more confidence. Fantasy is one of my favorite genres to read, so I have quite a few, but I do want to go ahead and apologize for the fact that almost all of these are books in a series, but that's just kind of a thing with fantasy. It's all part of the series. You have very few standalones, at least there are very few standalones that I have actually read. So I will be starting with a classic for me, which is Aragon by Christopher Paolini, and this is the first book in the Inheritance Cycle, and I personally love this book series. I know that some people can kind of give up after reading the first book, but keep in mind, this is Christopher Paolini's first book. He was 16 when he wrote and published it, but the series as a whole is incredible. This book follows Aragon and his dragon, Sephira, in the land of Alagasia, and this land is ruled by a very cruel and corrupt king, King Galbatorix. He has destroyed most of the other dragons in existence. There are only three remaining eggs, and Aragon somehow gets his hands on one of them, and it hatches for him, and he creates a bond with his dragon. And in the land of Alagasia, one of the highest honors you could possibly have was being a dragon rider, and there is this really strong connection between dragon and rider. If one of them dies, it is just this really horrific and terrible event, and they have this very, very strong emotional bond to each other. And this is very Hero's Quest-like. Um, Aragon is kind of going through this journey of learning how to be an adequate dragon rider and try to defeat the King Galbatorix. He has a lot of help along the way and you get to meet so many different allies and the different creatures and kind of magic system in this book is really incredible and I like how at the end of the series some things that seemed kind of like plot holes in the first book really tie up well and the series as a whole is just this really fantastic and complete story. The next book that I have to recommend is Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones and I'm sure that many of you guys know the Studio Ghibli film that is of the same name, but this is the book that the movie is based off of, and even if you've seen the movie, I highly, highly recommend checking out this book. One of the things that I really love about this particular fantasy novel is, number one, you can read it as a standalone. It comes with a companion trilogy, so if you want more of the world, you can always jump into it, but you will be completely satisfied with the ending of the story as a complete story. Number two, the world building in this book is so incredible and the characters are just really exaggerated and ridiculous but they're so wonderful and endearing to read. This is just some of the most beautiful fantasy I've ever read and it's all packed into the pages of one single book which is just incredible to me and if you're looking for a standalone fantasy but I mean not really because you can still read two more books in this companion trilogy um, check out Howl's Moving Castle because I love 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 this book and it is so incredible. Next I have A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab and this is the first book in a trilogy. I have not read the second book which is A Gathering of Shadows because it's not out yet but I feel very confident recommending the Ishwa books even if I haven't completed the trilogy because I just really love her writing. So I definitely recommend jumping into this book especially because the next book comes out next month so you can just dive right into the next one. But one of the things that I really like about this particular story it doesn't end on a cliffhanger so it's still a very satisfying story on its own. There are some loose ends that kind of need to be tied up so that left me wanting another book even before it was announced that there was going to be another one but this book follows two main characters, Kel and Lila. Kel is a very specific magician who can travel between the parallel London, so there is Red London, Grey London, Black London, and White London, not in those orders, that's just kind of how I said them. And he travels between them as a messenger for the different royalties within each kingdom, except for Black London because it is tied off from the rest of the world because its magic system devours everything. And then there is Lila, who is a pickpocket and just one of the most fantastic characters I have ever read. 
and she ends up lifting something very valuable from Kel and he has to chase her through the different Londons and kind of has to team up with her because he finds that he actually really needs her help and finds that she's a really great ally. This book is really, really fun. Like I said, it is the first book in a trilogy and the next book comes out next month. So if you really want to dive into the second book, um, immediately after reading this one, you don't have that long to wait. I had to wait an entire year, so if you pick this up now and only have to wait a month, oh, you're so lucky. Which, I mean, it doesn't end on a cliffhanger, but I just, I love this world. I love Kel. I love Lila. They are just incredible characters, and I cannot recommend this particular book enough. The next fantasy novel that I have to recommend is Falling Kingdoms by Morgan Rhodes. This is the first book in a six book YA fantasy series, and this is a multiple point of view fantasy series which I would compare lightly to Game of Thrones. It's not an exact replica of Game of Thrones. It's about these three different kingdoms who all have different levels of power, one being very wealthy and flourishing well, one kingdom is very much in poverty, and then another kingdom is doing okay, but they are in this really awful state of submission to religion and their really evil leader who is very power hungry. And there's a lot of intrigue in this book because you get to follow characters from each kingdom and how they're trying to kind of build themselves up and take power back for their kingdom and save their people and this is a young adult novel so there isn't heavy world building there definitely isn't heavy politics there's more action there's more romance um, there's really great character development in my opinion and that's one of the things that I really like about this particular fantasy with each installment you get really great character development you get new plot points and it's always very action-packed and interesting and the writing flows very easily um, but the only downside to this is I feel like the world building is a little bit off for me, but overall pretty solid read. I know some people are torn um, on this series, whether they really love it or they really hate it. I am someone who very much enjoys it and would recommend it to others, obviously because it's in this video. The next book that I have to recommend is Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. This is the first installment in an urban fantasy trilogy, and it is really incredible. I read it this past year, and as a whole it's really interesting. It follows two main characters, Karu and Akiva, though we do get some viewpoints from other characters, but the two main ones that we really, really care about and their storylines tie together are Karu and Akiva, and they are kind of on opposing sides of a war. Karu has been raised by Chimera Chimera, I'm not really sure how to say it, but she is raised by people who are essentially beasts in this alternate universe or alternate world. Um, and Akiva is an angel and angels are out to exterminate all the beasts and enslave them. So they want to exterminate the powerful ones and enslave the weak ones and have full power of their land. And they are on opposing sides of the war, but they find themselves kind of drawn to each other and kind of interested in what each other has to say. And they both have very different ideals of how their world should work. And this particular trilogy, I think, did such a fantastic job of highlighting what it means to go to war and kind of the casualties around it and kind of the strategies and the hardships of war and it was such a profoundly deep novel. Um, all three of them were just profoundly deep to me and I was really surprised because it is a young adult trilogy but it went there and it was really fantastic and overall just as a fantasy book it was really well written and the world building is just amazing. Lainey Taylor does such a fantastic job of creating this really beautiful, structured, well-detailed world for you to just kind of fall into and fall in love with. And the magic system is really, really interesting and her character development is just fantastic. I really love it. She writes really great characters. She writes really fantastic, sleazy, evil characters. So I definitely have to recommend this one. Okay guys, that has been it for my recommendations video this month. Let me know what one of your favorite fantasy novels is in the comment section below and maybe I've read it and we can have a discussion or maybe I haven't and I need to put it on my TBR. Either way, it should be fun to find out. I will link all the information for the Goodreads group in the down bar below if any of you guys want to join and I highly encourage it. This is a really great monthly reading topic group. I'm just really excited and impressed by the content that everyone is putting out each and every month so I'm just excited for our little group to grow and just become this really fantastic community for us all to be a part of. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Stay weird.